Hi, my name is Beverly Stewart. And the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to play with some plat patterns. And if you look down here, I've just raided the marker drawer. Colored gel pens and colored Sharpies and colored highlighters. So nothing fancy. First thing we're going to do is just draw the simplest kind of plaid. Space your lines out evenly, the white and the pink spaced about the same. I'm doing this freehand. We're going to be freestyling this today. So that's your basic gingham plaid or your tablecloth plaid, whatever you want to call it. Or I've got a pink gel pen here and I'm just going to um, use the pink lines as a racetrack and, and draw a skinnier pink line down the center of each pink line that's already there. Turn the paper. At least I like to turn the paper when I change directions. And you're going to draw the perpendicular lines, go straight down the pink lines, go in the other direction. You can choose to go down the white raceways or the pink raceways. Either one will make a different plaid. And if you want ideas, just get Mr. Google out. Do a video internet search for uh, plaid patterns or tartan plaid patterns and see what comes up. And if you're looking for something a little more formal, the tartan will bring you the more formal classic plaids. There are endless varieties, as you will find when you inter internet search for plaids. So this time we're going to do some really wide stripes. So there's no fancy equipment involved in this. Of course, these might not be the colors you want to use on your card when you're making a card, but it is excellent for practice. Uh, the chisel tips are actually a little better to work with than the brush tips if you're going to use markers. And especially if you're going to use rulers, the rulers would have a tendency to ruin your brush tips. And so um, be careful of your markers when you're going right against a ruler with your marker for an extended project like that. Now we're going to add some pink lines down the middle of these broad stripes we've already put. So the key here is we want some variety. We don't want all our lines to be the same width, uh, more like what we did when we were doing the gingham plaid. And so we've got some wide lines and some narrower lines and then we're going to add some skinny lines and I'm going to use the yellow marker for my highway this time go straight down there this would be really cute on an Easter card get a little Easter plaid going here and we'll add a little bit of pink detail with the pink pen so I think I'll use this for my highway this time and turn it and do the same thing going the different direction. There you go. Now that's our practice. And I'm gonna be back with a grid in a minute and we're gonna do something different. I'm back. I am scoring some cardstock. Doesn't matter what kind of cardstock, whatever you've got excess of. I scored it quarter inch all the way across uh, vertically. Now I'm gonna turn it and score it quarter inch. We have a nice scored grid on um, cardstock, and you're familiar with scored background, and you could use this for a type of plaid. You could vary the width of the lines for a more intricate kind of plaid. Um, same thing with the back, but that's not what I really did this for. I've got a stays on pad here, and I'm going to take the stays on pad and rub it lightly all over the back and come up with a grid like this. And this is just to visually help me line my plaid up when I move on to the next step. And I'm gonna take some watercolor paper and just tape it down on this grid that I made. Um, and it's a visual clue, cue, to um, help me see if I'm going straight on this without having to actually have a ruler right up next next to my paintbrush when I move on to this next part of our watercolor tutorial. And we're going to use the old squeezing the ink pad method of gaining our watercolor. It's a good thing to use the tools you're most familiar with. And so here we go. I'm going to pick up a little bit of dapper denim ink and we're going to draw our first line 
and I'm just eyeballing that from side to side trying to keep the width the same and I'm gonna go down three uh, four and do it again Keep doing that until you get the whole thing. And put a little piece of paper there if your eye needs some help going straight. And turn it over so I can get to this side without getting in my mess. One, two, three, four. So we're switching to red. Squeeze the ink pad, open it up. I'm going to do a really wide red stripe right in between those two. So it's going to be double wide. And see, it's not straight, it's not perfect, but you will have a fun, whimsical plaid when you're done. And if you want it to be straight and perfect, I would suggest Photoshop. Or some other digital program. Or frog tape. You can use frog masking tape, but you would spend quite a bit more time making your plaid if you were taping and untaping everything all the time. All right, crush curry. And put some skinny lines this time. There. Now it's time to watch the paint dry. You cannot, cannot do watercolor going the other direction until this is completely dry. So we're going to set it aside and wait for the magic of TV to dry that. Now we're going to do the same thing with the same colors going the other direction. I'm going to turn it around so I and get myself into what I already did. Okay, we're going every three, so three is right there. I put this aside and let it dry. We're going to make a little gingham accent piece for the plaid, the red and blue plaid that we just finished. So I'm going to get the dapper denim out again because I wanted you to see what it looks like when you do tone on tone. And I think this is probably one of my favorite ones to do it tone on tone. And we're just going to do a little uh, tablecloth or gingham plaid, evenly spaced all the way across. Nothing fancy here, but you will love the results. There we go. This is the fun part. We get to take it off and make a card. And we cut our other plaid into a star. And it's going to go just like that. Here's our finished product. Two plaids together. Your mom always told you not to do that. But I think it works. And you've got the bonus negative piece that you can use on another card. Happy plaid. I have a wide aqua painter filled with water and I'm using Bermuda Bay, Old Olive, and Smoky Slate for my diagonal plaid. On the diagonal, I kind of need some help going straight. And um, don't touch the paper because you'll make a mess, but keep that paper right next to it so you can see what you're doing. And there you go. There you go, that's a beginning. I'm gonna skip four and go there. This also keeps my hand off the work, oils from my hand. Okay, now we're gonna use um, Old Olive and we're not gonna use the paper going across because it's already wet and we would make a mess. So we're gonna kind of freehand this, add some stripes in between. 
Same principles as when we were using the markers, now we're just using watercolor paint. Or dye inks, whatever the case may be. And smoky slate is our last color. Okay, the first set of diagonal stripes is finished and it's time to set it aside to dry. One, two, three, four, five, six. Is that six? Is that straight? Okay, here we go. Sorry if I'm mumbling to myself. This does take a little bit of concentration. Big fat Bermuda Bay stripe. And one of the fun things about the plaid is watching the different colors as they blend together when you cross the different colors of paint and line. So you get all these variations in hues. Start to get a vision of what it's going to be like when it's done. And even if you're trying to do two exactly the same, they're not going to end up exactly the same. So enjoy the variety. Okay, that went faster. Helps after you got that first line of grids on there. There. Now I'm going to set that aside to dry. One more thing I wanted to show you on this. I did take a ruler and I added some smoky slate gray lines, a double set of lines all the way through, and then a Bermuda Bay bigger line right on the Bermuda Bay stripes going through. And so I just wanted to point that out, um, that this can be, you can add more to it and before you stamp on it. and. Stamping on plaid is a little tricky, but the big bold sayings work the best. And I just wanted a ribbon that would uh, complement the plaid, but not overpower the plaid. And so that's what we got with this one. Thank you.